to order the uh, Miami Township Trustee meeting of October 2nd, 2023. You okay, Chris? Yep. All right. Um, calling to order at 5.01. And we'll start with the adoption of the minutes from last time. Everybody have a chance to look at the September 18th minutes? I so move adoption. I'll uh, second. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, shall we vote? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. 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 Yes. And Ms. Moyer, yes. Okay, got that done. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Are we confident hand. that the new microphone is is on? Oh, um, picking up. It, it may also be that uh, my hearing is declining. But well, you you would you have the new microphone is on, but thank you. I'm all paranoid about it, so thanks for letting me check. And I'll um, speak with authority. All right. <laughs> Motion to pay the bills. I'd like to enter a motion to pay our bills of $47,603.18. That's general fund $15,609.15. Fire and rescue, a modest $28,417.49. EMS, $188.03. And cemetery, $230.11. Road and bridges, $3,158.40. Do I hear a motion? I so move. I'll second. Any discussion? I have none. Let us vote. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. And Mr. Mayor is a yes. Alrighty. Let's go over our correspondence. There's some interesting ones. We probably <coughs> responded to Robert Graham Jones, some of your scared Jones. And Michelle Burns, invitation to Chris Mutcher to join a task force for a new parcel of land. Unavailable. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Brad Rue Rui. Rui. Mm -hmm. of Dinsmore Law, a request for um, documents and for a resolution. Ohio Power Siting Board, I thought that was new news on the Kingwood, but you say it's not. Um, uh, uh, in okay. a nuanced way, it's new. But okay, we'll get to that nuance a little later. Um, Chrisona Anderson from Green County sent us money about grant money for, um, didn't send us money, sent us information about grant money for townships. Um, Cynthia Lipse requested permission to clean headstones to honor veterans, and I assume someone contacted her. Like the chair? I assume the chair would. Well, we need to get that straight because, um, yeah. We need to get this straight because when it comes to the cemetery, I never know if somebody's contacted, but we'll, we'll, we'll work that out. How about that? Okay. And Otarma, renewal documents due. Did you read that? They want a proxy statement to appoint a member and an alternate for context. Is that something we usually do? Maybe. Okay. I mean, a lot of times there's, there's forms that accompany, you know, the policy that gets to the chair and, and he or she usually fills out the forms and if that's part of it. Okay. For the renewal. So Make sure that happens. Um, all right. We're also about to, uh, just throw this in, come to a renewal period for our health insurance. For the well, renewals. I've been talking with Liz McGuire yes. and she said we do that in May. Okay. Okay. Oh, maybe we change. Yeah, maybe we change other slides. Because it doesn't seem like the whole year ago we were talking. So, yeah. so I I talk, I've got to be That's not directly on the agenda right now. <laughs> That's true, Don. I'll tell you Fine, what. What's your health insurance? Anyway, I, I'm in I'm close contact with Liz McGuire right now. Good. Well, How about that? Good. There's a reason. Yeah. yeah. When it's appropriate time. Yeah. Um, public, public agenda, that's, it looks like we have a lot of public here today. We have Mark Heiss of the um, Chamber of Commerce and... I'm Larry and Corey. Larry and Corey from NE Broad... NE Broadband. Broadband. Yes. Would you like to go first? <coughs> Before they start, okay. I just want to say that since apparently I was the one who was being earmarked as having 
retribution against the prior owner of this, I'm going to recuse myself from this conversation and let you two make whatever arrangements that you feel is the most uh, adequate uh, financial or physical uh, relationship for you. So you just let me know when you're done making the decision, and I'll be back. Okay. Okay, so I guess we'll start here. <clears throat> um, we purchased Clifton Communications, which had a relay point at the township garage. Um, upon the purchase, we still had not gotten the contact information for you guys, access to the building, or um, any form of documentation saying that we're allowed to be there. So that was the initial reach out, was to see if we could straighten out what, what was going on we was told by the previous owner that there was some animosity in, uh, in amongst the parties. So we just wanted to come out and represent. When were you told that? Back when you bought the, or? Um, about a week before I contacted. Us? Yes. Okay. I was told by the previous owner that um, him and Chris were in an altercation for some reason. Okay. I don't have much information, just that they're arguing about something. But we are no longer affiliated with Zot or Clifton Communications. We are our own entity, and we want to move forward with a a more solid arrangement. Either something on paper that says, "Hey, you guys can be here. This is what we provide. This is what you provide," and maybe a fair access policy statement. Maybe we need to work on the equipment. Fair times to come and work on the equipment, or if we need to notify someone, then come work on the equipment. We would just like to have all of that laid out if it's an option to pursue actually having an arrangement between the company and ourselves. I will add a little bit here. Um, the Zod is like 80 years old, worked in the Air Force, and sometimes he, he got into business because he didn't have internet at home, which is kind of the common theme in the wireless business. And so, you know, he, he got it, neighbor wants it, another neighbor wants it. He got to the place that really the business was more than what he wanted to handle. And at his age, that's very understandable. Uh, so, Corey is very versed in networking and putting stuff together. So, most of the network has been upgraded strictly because of the way we can handle the data going through it. Uh, and hopefully within a few more months we'll be able to up the capacity so customers can have higher capacity. Uh, you know, people call it speed, but it's really capacity uh, of internet. But out here, I ran Country Connections from 2008 to 2015, and where he has Zot relays from the township garage to the Green Leg, I actually talked to that guy back in, I don't know, 2012, 2013, but he was just outside of what Country Connections could, could do. And so it's, it's not uncommon to do the kind of arrangement where you find a place you can get internet and then bounce it from there to a higher structure so you can rebroadcast it wirelessly. Uh, you know, I, you see people say, well, wireless doesn't work, and I say, okay, then turn, turn your cell phone into me, it must not work, mm -hmm. because in many respects it's the same type of technology. And basically we're trying to serve the unserved. That's, that's our main focus. We, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that here in town you probably have high speed available to you. If you don't, we'll talk to you. But as a rule, the big boys come in, they take care of the small communities, and they leave people on the outside to die. And that's where we come in and, and pick up and provide service equivalent to or better. Then we get a lot of people that say, I've never had, in fact, with the Country Connections, we had a grain leg down here by uh, Cedarville. They got one down in a, in a uh, tornado. And that was one of our access points at that time. And we had, 90% of the customers that were on that access point back on our service off a different tower the next day without them calling us. In fact, a couple of people, well, I didn't call you tell you we were down. Yeah, but, but we know you're down. We have, we can, we can monitor that. And, and so we, you know, we pride ourselves on taking care of the customer, getting out and servicing them without being called. Now, sometimes 
they, you know, they still call, but, but uh, we have the ability to look at it. In fact, Corey could right now look at every customer if he wanted to on a cell phone. The technology just blows my mind. Okay, well, I have, I had initially, um, it was my thought that we would meet privately and work out all the questions we have. Chris responded, if you want to talk to us, come to a meeting. And then he left the room. So I'll, I'll just list the questions I have and then you can tell me if it's worth talking about it here or having a private like, business meeting. Okay. Um, one is, I just want to make clear, I think what you do for people in the, in the township that don't have broadband, you somehow amp up a signal and send it out. You have customers. One thing is, I don't know, is this, because I didn't even know you guys existed in our, in our building. <laughs> is, Welcome to is most this, of the world. Is this legal? Yeah, the equipment, Absolutely. The, <laughs> the equipment we use is all FCC yeah. regulated. The frequencies yeah. are FCC regulated. The power is FCC regulated. And we don't argue with the FCC. Yeah, and we have no lease with you. Correct. There's no lease. So it, it brings up um, questions for me about liability. We have insurance. Okay, so that's all good. So yeah, we have, a, uh, in fact, I put a two million dollar liability policy on. And so. well, I do think we should check in with our attorney uh, on process for making him. You know, it's a public property being used. Um, I, I doubt that there's any competition for that space, you know, anyone else is doing the same business. Uh, but we ought to have, yeah. you know, what's the formality of it? I mean, what for those purposes, can you tell me what exactly is it? I, I imagine a big antenna and some amplifiers. That's what I'm imagining. <laughs> so is you want to explain the size of the antenna on the building? It's just a dish about that big round on the side of the building. And so there's a dish on the side of the building and there's... Modem and stuff or whatever. There's, 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 there's a couple of cables plugged into the cables. dish. So basically we take the internet from uh, the source, which would be like a router, mm -hmm. and then we do some magic in the router, mm -hmm. put it out the cable, and shoot it up to another tower. And then that tower has another router. And we basically can hop as many times as we want and redistribute as much as we want. Okay. And then one other thing is, do you know that it's gonna take a couple of years, but broadband is coming to the township? We, well, yes. There's, month, there's a tremendous amount of money being put out by the government to deliver broadband in rural areas. The reality is, since 2008, the government's been putting a lot of money out to bring broadband to the rural areas. And most of the rural areas haven't gotten any broadband yet. Well, I don't want to rain on your parade, but those contracts have been signed and there's a work plan and they've yep. gotten the work. So we have survived years of those work plans. Okay, cool. When I, when I had Country Connections, we had a subdivision in Commercial Point. And we had about 20 customers in that subdivision then, um, oh, uh, the Verizon, who, who took over Verizon? Front, Frontier came in and put high speed through the telephone, DSL through the telephone, and we, we had six customers leave us. Uh, and I wasn't sorry to see any of the six go because they were gamers and they used a lot of bandwidth. And within six months, we gained back that six and six more. So I think as long as we do a good job of service, we're not going to have people leave us. Okay. Now, I say that I don't mean 100% are going to stay, but we're not going to lose 100% of our customer base. But you also don't need to defend your business model. Right. So we just wanted to make sure yeah, you were aware. We want to make sure it's going to be relevant in a couple so, of years or not. Yeah. So a lot of those things, um, if you hit the ground like me, because I have to plan a lot of the technical stuff, when you follow these guys to the building, they don't hit everything. Um, they, they claim the area by saying that it is buildable within X amount of days, and then they can blow right past the road and not service the whole thing. And it's happened a lot. And that's where we pick up customers who stay with us regardless of what service gets put in. We've had our, some of our communities that were built with new cable and lost a couple, like Larry say, and then most people come back to us because either customer service is better they like talking to a person, their bill doesn't go up 10 times in a year, 
Um, we're just more personable to be a small company. Do you guys live locally? I live in Washington Courthouse. Okay. So maybe what should happen is you or I, I don't mind doing it, could talk by phone, think through all the questions, take those mm -hmm. questions, our attorney, just make sure it sounds kosher to her. We could send you also a generic lease that we have. We have okay. like a template saying yeah. that um, this is what we're going to give you in exchange for space, and we'll, we'll line out what we're going to put in that space, a fair access policy, like I said, and just general liability will fall on us if anything happens to the equipment. We, have, we put a whole harmless clause in our lease. Okay. We probably so, have 40 or 50 leases well, now between all of us. I'm, I'm very relieved. I'm, I'm comfortable with you being okay. our informational agent. Okay. And then take uh, that to the attorney. Let's, let's get a big title. It's, uh, it's, yeah, that's all I need. Um, it sounds, I'm very relieved yeah. from what I imagined. It sounds a lot more. Uh, it's you know we're on a lot of water towers, uh, okay. grain legs, a lot of farming grain legs. You know, Country Connections was based in Washington Courthouse, and uh, Fay County Commissioners. Uh, we were on the water towers that they controlled, uh, and Commercial Point. I was on the water towers that the city owned in Commercial Point. We were on a lot of grain legs between between places to make the service work. Okay. So did you did you put your phone number in that email you sent us? I don't know if he did. Um, I, I get a card. I, okay. I can send you a new email and I'll have all the updated information for me and Larry. Okay. Just so you then which it. one should I talk to you, you or Larry? Um, technical questions? Probably. <coughs> it's technical. probably not going to be technical questions. It's probably going to be more like business legal questions. Or That's me. Matt. Yeah, okay. And you're Larry. Yeah. <laughs> and then for the interim right now, do you have access to the building? Do you have a key? I mean, the only time we have access is when somebody's there. So <clears throat> it was under the understanding we didn't even know Zop had a key. And um, when I spoke to Chris the first time, he thought we had a key and we was going into the building on our own free will without even talking to you. But we do not have any access. So. Um, we would like to have access if something was to go wrong. We want to yeah, know who to call or how to get in. Sense, yeah. Yeah, and, you, and you never know. I mean, sometimes equipment fails in the middle of the night. And yeah. if you're responsive, you fix it. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we, you know, sometimes like. Sometimes trees come down in the middle of the night. Sometimes yeah. it snows in the middle of the night. Yeah. And incidentally, snow doesn't impact us a whole lot. But we're talking about other things the township yeah. has to do. Yes, there might be somebody there in the middle of the night. Yeah, so if there's no power at the, the building, then we'll have to come out with a generator and hook it all back up and make sure our customers stay online. And if, yeah, and we'll probably end up putting a battery back up in there that lasts us 10, 12 hours so that if something happens in the middle of the night, we, it'd be more a matter of equipment failing than power. We're pretty lucky up there. We don't, we don't lose power a lot. We, uh, once or twice over 25 years. Well, that's, that's real good. Don't. Okay, well, I think we have a plan here. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate you coming and contacting us and reaching out. No problem. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are interested in adding new customers if you know anybody who wants service. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And can we get service out there in exchange? Do we? Do you guys use service out there? Okay. I bring my iPad when I'm there at night, yeah. you know, taking a break. But yeah, I can go on with stuff. One of those gamers that they're talking about using up all their bandwidth, right? It's not me. <laughs> that was and sarcasm. <laughs> okay, Mr. Heiss, Mr. Heiss, Chamber of Commerce. So I was hoping Richard would be here because I have a question. Um, at the BZA meeting, Richard made a point of saying that he, um, that we had never had to permit the sunflower field before. And I'm kind of curious as what was different this year. Why was it all of a sudden, you know, first it, it, it was being uh, run with by the Council Land Trust, this time is being run in the last two years, been run, run uh, in concert with the Council Land Trust and the Chamber. But all of a sudden, there needed to be a permit. 
um, for, for an already recognized agritourism activity. You want my guess? I, I'd like, eventually I'd like an answer, but I'll take your guess. Well, we'll get the answer when Richard's here, but my, my best guess is with the transfer of operation from the land trust to the chamber, somebody from the chamber questioned whether a permit was necessary or not. It wasn't the other way around. I know maybe how it works. Maybe because t-shirts were being sold, they asked for them. Well, no, because the, the way that discussion actually went was that Richard came to our um, one of the, the committee members and said that the landowner um, had informed him that they could sell water, we could sell water, we could take donations, but we couldn't sell t-shirts and we found that unusual because the council land trust had in the past and we hadn't heard anything from the New Hearts and um, when uh, Michelle Burns went back to Sharon New Hearts, she said, I didn't say any such thing. Well, we're definitely in, in uncharted grounds at the moment without a captain to answer to your request. Yeah, this so. is the night he, he's usually here. I'm not sure. So, but that, that was the only reason I came. I, 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 it just it seemed to me to be um, a, a, an uneven. Um, I, I mean, I'm remembering an email now, and it was. Um, it said, I do not find selling t shirts to be consistent for Richard be consistent with agritourism. You can appeal that, but there isn't time before your sunflowers. I can put you on the agenda if you want a temporary use. And because there wasn't enough time for them to appeal his turning down of the agritourism, he put you on the agenda as a temporary use here. That's as I remember it. So it, it is pretty convoluted, so I don't know. Yeah, it's just not clear to me, um, and that's all I'm seeking is clarification. And I'd like clarification next year. If someone has an agritourism um, request, they they simply ask apply for a permit for a permit for agritourism, correct? Through yeah. which R Richard. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So There's something in the code to apply for an agritourism permit. It's state law. Correct. Which does not require a permit from the township. The, uh, the, the permitting from the township in, um, when it's a recognized agritourism event um, has to do with points of egress, ingress, and parking. It rests on the township for interpreting agritourism and that's Continually developing. Oh, I know. I no, I know. I know. I'm more. You may know we, more about it than I do. Us, us folks here will never solve that mm -hmm. debate until it goes through through the courts fully, and I understand that. But I'm I'm, I'm just saying I, I found it odd that that it, that it would all of a sudden require a permit when it had not in the past when we did not change anything other than we partnered with Tecumseh Land Trust to make it happen. And, and you're hearing was a temporary use permit this time. Right, and so I'm, so I'm just, it, it, it's gone on for decades without any temporary use permit or anything like that, and so that's all. Uh, I can only say contact Richard directly or come to the next meeting. Oh, no. I'm supposed to no, be here. We'll, 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 kind of, we'll, we'll discuss it. And, and, and I, can, I won't be surprised if he shows up at the time he estimates the police report will be, or excuse me, the uh, fire report will be over. Oh, that's all I had, so I, <laughs> I, I just want to say he's here the first meeting of the month, not the second, so. Just he, for he, may, he may be here in the next few minutes. We'll see. Okay. Thanks, Mark. I'm moving along. Fire department report. Uh, 23 EMS incidents uh, during the last two weeks. Eight fire. Um, I told you last meeting I was going to start breaking down mutual aid requests and I missed a number. Should be 12 total mutual aid requests, nine of those, this being we requested mutual aid. Uh, nine of those were for EMS and three were for fire. Um, two of the fire were things that we needed automatic mutual aid for. One was that we were not available uh, and that was because we just had staffing and we're on, on an EMS call. 
Um, and then basically that same kind of thing on all the EMS calls. Um, we had Friday uh, six different calls, four of which were all close together. And with three people, there's no way to, to stack that. Um, so that's why I wanted to start trying to break those out and track them a little bit um, just to, to see how that ends up working out, at least start trending it a little bit. Uh, Chris Klein just obtained credentialed Ohio Fire Officer stuff. That's basically an Ohio Fire Chiefs Association credentialing where they go through and you, did, you just simply document all the tr core training you had for fire officers, submit that to the Fire Chiefs Association and they'll issue that credential to you. Uh, ground ladder and apparatus pump testing, two big test things that need to be done um, annually. Uh, we got pump testing done during COVID. We did not get ladder testing done during COVID. Um, and the reason for ground ladder testing not happening during COVID was we used underwriters laboratory and we have for years and years and years and they decided to get out of the business and not tell anybody. Um, so we are working with the technician who used to work for Underwriters Laboratory who started his own ladder testing company. And most of us, um, in fact, if not all of us that are in the east side of the county uh, will use him. We're doing it basically as a bulk purchase where we take our equipment to, a, to Cedarville, get all the testing and that done there to get a, a, a little bit of a pr better price. Um, so that's going on. Uh, software scheduling for our, our scheduling. We're changing the scheduling software as we, as you know, that will go into effect at 0100 hours on the 7th. That'll be when the switch gets flipped. Uh, street fair, as we all know, is coming up. Um, so I've got some last little things I got to do in terms of plugging people in the slots and that that I need to do. Uh, but most of that planning is, is uh, good to go. Uh, we did have a motor vehicle crash that was in, in the area of the Sunflowers. I don't know if it was related to the Sunflowers, if it was related to a funeral, but it doesn't really matter to me. It was all the same, all the same area. Um, fortunately, all minor injuries in that. But, uh, and then lastly, just to give you a little bit of an update on our, our staff injuries, the gentleman who has the torn ACL has had his surgery, has had his first uh, did uh, physical training or uh, personal training or not? No, physical training. I get this. My brain's not engaged tonight. <laughs> um, and then the other individual who had the meniscal tear does not need to have surgery. He has been released to full duty. Um, and the only thing they'll do is watch him to see if he has any complications. Then what they would do if he did have a complication, they go under the scope and they would basically cut a part of the meniscus out. And, and see where it goes. So good news, at least for, for one, the other one, you know, will be our, our six or so week holding and just to see where, where he is. I've got a few things I need to do now. BWC called me today, some real minor stuff that I need to do for the, for the ACL person, but that's, that's all pretty, pretty straightforward. So that's coming together pretty well. Good. Can I ask a question? Just out of curiosity, and first of all, just point of information, it wasn't either the it was neither the funeral nor the sunflower field. Um, it, it, I was on the scene with the deputy um, helping to direct traffic. Um, somebody completely disassociated with either group. Mm -hmm. At any rate, um, I know Xenia res responded with their, and I'm guessing I'm guessing our unit was out, our, our medic was out. Xenia responded just. Is that something we keep within the county, or was there a reason that Houston wasn't responding? Because they're way closer. I'm just curious. It's not always about the distance the station is. It's also taking into account when they're staffed. Gotcha. Okay. I'm just curious. Yeah. So it's not. It's it's not just geographical. Okay. Just, like I said, just just a curiosity question. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for fire department? Um, I just wanted to let the group know that we had the, both aprons uh, treated with the uh, sealant, um, used more sealant than it was estimated to because the cement was in the condition where it absorbed it at a much higher rate than, than was estimated. So 
Uh, I mean, that's mm. good, it costs a little more, but, or I mean, it's bad because it costs a little more, but it's good because it seems to have uh, gotten in there and hopefully we'll hang around for a while. Um, and they got it done a lot faster than we thought. And, and what? And they got it done a lot faster. Than yeah, because it went in so fast. Yeah. I guess I never asked him what the expected lifespan of that. Does it need to be retreated? Yes. He, five years. Yeah, he said three to five years, which would include our, the inside as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely. And I, I'm not sure. I've, actually, I forgot to ask him this, but I could email him. I'm not sure if it's the same product outside or inside, mm -hmm. but then it might be that we just you know, look and say maybe we do the ramps a little bit early so we can get the inside and the outside done at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that'd be certainly worth questioning, actually just questioning him about it just because we know we're going to have to do it. Yeah. Uh, and I, quite honestly, I personally wouldn't want to do it. That stuff is, whew, <laughs> it? it's potent. <laughs> That'll help with the soul, so it back home. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, thanks for getting that done, Chris. Staying after them. Glad it is done. Yeah, no doubt. Um, ready for cemetery and road report? Okay. Since the last since the last meeting, we had one burial. It was a natural burial last Thursday, but they actually had the service on Saturday. So that's why we had a big crowd Saturday? Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. They didn't need us to be there. So. I sold quite a few graves in the last couple of weeks, really. Pretty good. Yeah. All How all often? Two or five of them. I guess sold 12, and five of them are in traditional, with the rest are all naturals. So how, many, how many of the of the uh, plots sold, or whatever, uh, appear to be from at a distance from out of the area? Um, you mean the people? Yeah. Um, most of them are pretty local. One of them was Cincinnati, but. But everybody else seems to be local, familiar with the area, comes to the area all the time. Mm -hmm. When we went through the list of people buried in the natural prairie burial, um, there were, I don't know if it's half and half, but there were quite a few from other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've because noticed that. There's, this, okay. Because the availability of natural burials right. isn't great. That's where a lot of the interest is. People call and they're yeah. like, hey, there's only so many of these, and they like it here, it's Columbus closer. And and right. Yeah. Worked out pretty good. Springfield. Yeah. yeah. There's a large hornet's nest in that building back there. Oh, yeah. 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 But it's hornets in a paper wall. In the, in Wait, the ball case of hornet, yeah. they built which a nest, building? but these are yellow jackets going in oh. and out of it. So they must have stole the nest. Oh, really? Yeah. Which, which? Our little building in the natural area. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 It's back on the shelf right where they built the last one. And there's a hole in the wall, so as soon as they're done, mm -hmm. that's yeah. pretty good. When you said they're done, they mean before they're kill finished them or before they're for the year. Oh, they're finished. Okay. Don't call them. We don't want to call them. We don't want to call them. Yeah. 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 And that's, let's see, it's Brandon worked in the scattering area and cleaned it up today. So, so. Mm -hmm. The weeds mm -hmm. took care of things up there. Great. And the drop. Mm hmm. Great. We're still on top of it. It worked last time when I hit it. It worked. So. Yeah. Oh, I know. So he's yeah. he's done that today. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have, we have a resol resolution for the roads. Are we for roads. Are we roads? Are we, are we done for cemetery? I'm sorry. Anything for cemetery? I'm sorry. Anything else for cemetery? Anything else for cemetery? I don't. I don't. Don Cemetery? Nope. Okay. Cemetery. Roads Department. Yeah. yeah. Um, Say the Road Department. Road Department. Um, Brandon Lane was overlaid Friday. Mm -hmm. Thought it looked real nice. Mm -hmm. he, he, he left me a little spot up in the curve about that wide. So we're going to have to burn it or something. I know. <laughs> They'd already run by it and we couldn't back up and hit it. So huh. We'll burn it. We'll do something with it. Mm -hmm. I thought the roads were going to have nice. We're finishing up the ditches this week. We're done today, Brandon will be out tomorrow. Thursday. So all our road work is done? The ditches? Um, from the county? Yes. The county work is, yeah. is completed. The fog was all done and now the paving. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. We didn't have any striping or berming or anything this this. Just yeah. the okay. fog in the overlay. Yeah. We're good to go. Uh, let's see. We're hoping to start bases 
soon, maybe get them poured next week, so we're done with it. We've got like 11 in there. Really? Yeah, it's got four more in it. Well, this one and three others the other day. So. Oh. Get them, try to get them all in next week. And then I have doctor's appointments this week, Wednesday, mm -hmm. 10 30, and then Friday at 11. So the days are kind of shot. Mm -hmm. But I'll find out Wednesday what the Maybe what they're going to do with this. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah, there's my skin doctor. Mm -hmm. Hope I'm done with him. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. And yes. so for the time being, Brandon can handle all that has to be done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll still be working until they tell me I can. Mm -hmm. Light, light, lady, light, lady. I'm not. Okay. Can't lift anything. And this resolution is to certify what, what roads we have yeah. this year? Which yeah. is it? Um, there's, there's, I don't see a resolution. It's simply Second page. A, um, 40, isn't it? <coughs> um, how do we uh, approve resolution 2023 uh, annual report township roads, uh, unless there's any discrepancy from the board or from the road department? A second. Any further discussion? What were the changes yeah. from last year, just the spill ends? Um, was that last year? I think that was before, oh. but be that as it may, I, I didn't see any changes from last year. So. Okay. May we vote? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. And Ms. Moyers? Yes. Thank you. Went on one different roads, mm -hmm. usually just a short little piece of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have an odd setup. Um, I did not get the fiscal officer's report resolution. Did you? Oh, by God. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Fiscal officer not here tonight. Um, I. Um, entertain a motion to pass resolution 2023-41, amendment of permanent appropriations. Where is it? Is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. General fund electricity line increased by $400. Any discussion? Or no. Turn the lights motion? out, people. Turn the lights out. I move. <laughs> Adoption of this resolution. A second. Hearing no more dis no further discussion, may we vote? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Awesome. That's easy. Anything else for the fiscal officer portion of the meeting? No. Zoning inspector? Um, well, Don, just make sure you get a copy. I give you this. You had asked to we look at the procedure for it, and Chris has suggested we're talking about hiring a BZA coordinator for the public that doesn't know. We're going to split off Richard's job. He's going to be just the inspector, and we're going to hire a BZA coordinator for the um, all the business of the Board of Zoning Appeals, and we're in that process. So. Thank you for sure. Procedure and Deb did a beautiful new page for us. It's just so easy. Like, you know, what kind of hearing would you like? This, this, or that's just a beautiful description. So, well, I wrote it, but she she made it look good. <laughs> and, uh, I did send you her that. I'm sorry, that position email, didn't I? For the coordinator, what their email address was going to be. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That was easy. Um, anything else for anything more for zoning? Um, no, but uh, have there been any progress with Microsoft on, on clearing up these emails that don't go through? Specifically, the one for our web mistress. Uh, she determined that it had to be on her end. And when I, when I contacted Microsoft, they said there's nothing on their end that was a problem, and she thought it had something to do with her domain. 
but I haven't spoken to her directly. Okay, well that's that. that's news because the last I heard it was on Microsoft's. Yeah, and that's what I thought too. But, and she thought yeah. that too, and then she found out it was otherwise. Okay. Yeah, and I'm so I'm not sure what the details so are. My workaround is either going to her adoption link one. Yeah. Or, or just doing or it use, using your personal. Yeah, because I can I can send from my domain. Mm -hmm. in from the fire department it goes it goes right through so Every glitch i'm not sure okay yeah well all right that that helps okay um new business a resolution to create i believe this is right capital fund for medic is that mm -hmm. you have all that <laughs> uh before we do that let's just go through so we're all on the same page what what we're doing and what we need to do from this point. Uh, as you know, we're trying to uh, release the funds that have been sitting in 4901, the $269,175.85 that have been there uh, almost all year, and we've had uh, no luck to this point getting anyone authorize us to move it. And we're in that process of, by trying it another way right now, and where we are is the uh, uh, the attorney in Cincinnati who's doing this for us has arranged for the paperwork from the Ohio Department of Transit uh, Taxation for a fund transfer request form, which is what we have in front of us, and it had 17 different questions that needed to be answered. And uh, he answered some, and Margaret answered a couple, and I answered a few, um, but basically what it wants to know is um, things like uh, the amount to be transferred, uh, the current unencumbered fund balance of the fund, which is the 269,175. Want to know the total expenditures for the last three years, and that was determined to be $636,068.12. Total revenue for the last three years was uh, $905,243.97, and that left a balance of $269,175.85 which is the same amount that we're asking to be transferred back. And then questions of will the transfer or fund be used after the transfer and we will not use that fund anymore. Are the funds to be transferred in the unexpected balance in a bond retirement fund? No, they're not. Does the ta taxing authority have uh, any sinking fund or outstanding bond obligations? Yes, that's the USDA money we still owe. Identify the fund and he identified it as the, uh, now, which will be the new 2023, the trans for a refund, which is where this money will go, into the new 2023 capital fund project for an ambulance acquisition. Um, what's the purpose of the fund to acquire a new uh, ambulance? Number 15, has the taxing authority completed a similar fund transfer for the past five years? Uh, no. Please provide the dates and the amounts of similar fund transfers, which we didn't have. Is this uh, transfer at the recommendation of the state, out of the state? No. And don't need to describe it. Tax authority currently or ever been in a state of fiscal, fiscal caution watch or emergency? No. So I believe we have answered all the questions that, uh, that that form requires. And so what we'll do is we will send that back to him uh, with a resolution asking to uh, have the uh, Ohio uh, Department of Taxation Commissioner uh, authorize the creation of this capital fund 2023 and, and transfer the funds from the miscellaneous capital fund 4901 to that fund. Uh, and that's going to be done by Resolution 2023-42. Uh, it's a, a little too lengthy to, uh, to, to run through. Uh, it's just all the good w uh, wherefores and therefores and, and uh, it's going to be necessary to make these movements. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it had one blank that needed to be filled out, which was the amount of funds funds we're asking to move, and that's on page two, and that is the 269-175-85, and I have filled that in. Um, wait, wait, what? What's copy? Here, okay, yeah. there, at my um, So, with that, I would entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2023-42, which reads, officially, resolution authorizing the creation of the 2023 capital fund project excuse me, capital fund, ambulance acquisition, and the transfer of funds from the miscellaneous capital fund, 4901, to the capital project fund, ambulance acquisition, for the purpose of purchasing an ambulance. I hope that's clear. Um, I so I, move. No, he moved it. I enthusiastically second before oh. you get a chance to, because I'm... Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. 
There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Uh, hearing, none. hearing none, may we vote, please? Ms. Chair, may we vote, Chair? please? <laughs> Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. And Ms. Moyer is a yes. Okay, so that's three ayes and no nays. I will clean that up and send that down to them. I have to do a resolution, or I have to do an affidavit for a bunch of little stuff. And Margaret has to do an affidavit and have it, we both have to have it notarized, and then those will be put together and set down. I very much appreciate we'll move right along. your pushing on this. Well, yeah, I, I would like to say thank you for being so tenacious and getting this yeah, figured out. That's what we do. <clears throat> Good old township business. With her, I, I won't jinx us, but with hardly any eyes upon us. <laughs> no, just kidding. We have the eyes of the world, my dear. <laughs> there it is. Okay. And this will be on YouTube. That's all the new business I had. Okay. Um, Old business update. Can you, I, we couldn't adjourn right now, but originally they said the Supreme Court says we will not hear this. Now it says the OPSB will not offer another as, as another I, appeal. It, will, it, it just turned down the appeal. Right. As I understand it, uh, the oh here's Richard. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the power siding board had not gotten around to, and there was, it was just dead noise and no, dead silence about what was really going on, but had not uh, dealt with King Wood's appeal, and so King Wood, uh, or not, the company behind Kingwood has That's changed right. a couple times, uh, has then went to Supreme Court saying, hey, power siding board isn't treating us right, uh, so we want to appeal to you, and the Supreme Court just said, no. And then it came back, what's just happened is that power siding board finally got around to formally rejecting the appeal of the rejection the original re rejection of the whole project. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's open to uh, appealing to the Supreme Court. And it's not just Kingwood. It could also be the citizens for Green Acres disagreed with the rejection of their challenging that the project should have been turned down on technical reasons, not just public opinion. Right. Um, all of the power siding board basis for rejection was uh, the overwhelming okay. public opinion and, and uh, local government opposition. Okay. Hi, Richard. Hi. So uh, I don't okay. know whether okay. citizens will, Green Acres will. Uh, appeal. If they do, we could be a, uh, we could concur, sort of, uh, which would be minimal legal expense. And um, we, we would take. But that has not come up, so. Yeah. Uh, but that would, this board would have to decide they want to participate. Yeah, we would have to have a special meeting, or if, um, if from, likely it would have to be an emergency meeting. Um, and we don't know what King would hold, but I'm assuming they'll appeal to the Supreme Court. Okay. Again. Sounds like the, we were just about to adjourn this meeting, Richard. Well, I, I thought I might. Anyway, I wanted to see if I could squeeze it now or tell you that I will be at your next meeting because I oh. wasn't at this one. So. Okay. All right, but if you want me to do a quick report, I can do that too, whatever you want. I'm sure. I'd sure. Like that. And, um, Mr. Heiss would like some, are you still, he brought an issue, but just uh, curious as to what the, the reason we need to permit for the sunflower field this year when it wasn't required in previous years? Because in previous years, nobody asked me for a permit, and I didn't know that they were doing something that needed, needed a permit. Can I ask who asked for a permit? 
No, no one has asked me for a permit in the past. So, I mean, this time? Yeah, this time I was asked, I was called and asked, do we need a permit? And by uh, Sarah. And, and I said, well, let me review. And I said, it looks like the simplest way to get this done fast would be to, to get a, a temporary use permit that would clearly cover what you were doing or proposing doing. And um, in that process, it, it was somewhat complicated. I talked to the new hearts to understand why they weren't getting a permit. It's their property. Right, yeah. And, and talked with the land trust about what the relationship had been in the past. But, um, and, you know, and, and, and found out some things. I mean, I knew that the, that the land trust had been, been helping with the, with the parking and, and all of that, and, and they were who actually got the speed limit lowered and originally hired sheriff's deputies. What I didn't know that they were doing other things than accepting donations for, for the, you know, for the, be present and, and, and helping everybody out. Um, if I had known that, then there might have been an issue about how they were operating too. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's like I was just trying, trying to figure it out. That I think maybe in, in now, you know, pieces of information that they were assuming that they were operating under the agritourism statute, but that doesn't make them not need a permit. <laughs> It's still a, a permitted activity. It's not, it doesn't give you, in other words, the, the, when the city of Ohio did that, they said there are certain requirements that have to be met and townships are allowed to, to make sure those requirements are met. Yeah, the requirements are met. Yeah, so, um, so there would be a permit no matter what. The, there could be an issue about what qualified for agritourism. That's a whole other portion of that and that's why I said I thought given the timing that it would be it made more sense you were more likely to get what you wanted immediately by doing the temporary use than it was to to argue the agritourism. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any other Oh okay well um, since I last saw you I've issued Three zoning permits, um, one for an in-ground pool, one for a new, no, let's see. Test. Yep, and, and, and two for new houses. Really? Yep, one on Clifton Road and the other on Hilt Road. The Hilt Road is one of the lots next door to where Lamar owned the, the older house. The, the people bought, I don't know if they bought a, a whole swath of land and then subdivided it or just bought three lots, but they're now selling off the other, mm. the other two pieces. And uh, the one on Clifton Road is actually, it is a new house, but it's replacing a, an existing house that was there that, that was allowed to deteriorate to the point that it's no longer habitable. Oh. So it's being torn down and they're building a new house. So that, in some ways, that's not a, a new residence in the township, but it, but it is a new house. Mm -hmm. The zoning commission met as usual. Um, I think on both discussing temporary use and on solar zoning, they, they made progress. Um, they are planning Hopefully that they will get a quorum to have an October meeting. They don't usually have an October meeting because it's harvest time, and, mm -hmm. and many of their their members are are very busy with those activities. But if if they can, they're going to try to keep the momentum going and have a meeting in October. Great. Um, uh, there's a meeting that I'm going to at regional planning this week. I, I have, don't have my calendar in front of me, but it's, it's tricky. It's a work week at Antioch. That's one of the reasons I'm not, not here but at the usual smart, time. Smart so I've got a bunch of things going on all at, at once, but that's coming up for me. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. 
particularly relevant. Um, well, um, Denny and I have been working for some time to work out problems that I've been having with accessing the township email, I mean the, the Miami township suffix. Uh, we think we've got that worked out, but I haven't been actually able to, to use that email for several weeks. Um, there's the out, whatever it is, Microsoft Office to use their, their system mm -hmm. requires a certain somewhat complicated security process. And, and generally speaking, it requires a cell phone. Yeah, it's a two-factor two authorization. And, and I don't have a cell phone. And we haven't decided whether the solution is I should get a cell phone or there's another, and Denny thinks there's, a, there's an alternative I found a work going about it. Thanks, Denny. <clears throat> yeah, there's, like, it, you know the little sort of chip dongle thing that Margaret uses to access our banking account? No. no. So it, it basically comes up with a random number on a little LCD to screen on like a key fob. Oh, is that right? Oh. Well, they have a version for Microsoft for that. Oh. It's and kind of like having a special password. Yeah, so, so it would give him that number to use for two-factor authentication. Oh, good. I didn't, actually, Jeremy found it, and he's like, yeah. this would solve your problem, because, you know, as soon as I talked to him about creating an exception for him, he's like, you cannot do that. You just, Where do we get one in these gizmos? He, I have a link for it. Oh, I, okay. to there, I, I don't know the price, but it's not anything substantial. Uh -huh. Way cheaper than a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, or a cell phone that will do what, what needs to be done. It's probably not a flip phone. No, it's not a flip phone. <laughs> Definitely not. So I, I've been um, updating. We, we talked about the file that where we're keeping files on people by address. Just right. to start keeping. If you would, and so I think I'm caught up with the BZA hearings by address. If you could put those three in their own file. I, we're, we're alphabetizing them just by street name. Okay. I. Okay, so I need to know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a critical component, or I might put them in by applicant's name or, or by yeah. parcel number or something else. Um, I would like at this point, because I'm not used to that, I'll duplicate these and still keep my chronological file. Yeah, totally. Because that's much easier for me to remember sure. when something happened. Names I don't remember yeah. as well as I remember, you know, the where it was or, yeah. or whatever happened. So, so but I could start. You can even that. duplicate them and hand them to me, and I'll throw them. Also, the Marilyn, I have reviewed and gone over the the um, forms that you propose, mm -hmm. but I can't officially. I'm not supposed to use the township email to communicate, and I can't use the township yeah. email to communicate. So you haven't gotten a response okay. from me on that. But it's that's in the in the works, so okay. to speak. I have one more question, but it's escaped me. Well, I can come back again at the next meeting if you if you'd like. I'm that's sure it wasn't that important. Okay. Um, well, barring that popping into your head, okay. may I move to adjourn? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll no. second. Have you from your suppers? No, that's but No. We were just uh, at the end of this. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 I agree too.